Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to introduce the key online bioinformatics resource providers, the NCBI and the EBI. Now, this is the home page for NCBI at the time of recording. Now, if this website, when you visit it at this uh, URL here, looks slightly different than what's shown here in the slide, it's because you know, websites uh, change and morph their appearance over time. Now, typically, uh, typically, sorry, major content does not disappear, but you may have to click in a slightly different place to find some of the things that we're going to link to in the next video and in, in this one. So just be persistent, and I'm sure you'll uh, figure out how to navigate these resources. Now, you've probably used the NCBI or the National Center for Biotechnology Information before. For example, in this popular resources over here in the sidebar, it lists PubMed as number one here. So this is a database of biological, uh, biomedical uh, literature that you may have come across previously. But they also host uh, popular tools, including BLAST, that's for sequence-based searching of uh, sequence uh, databases. If you haven't heard of BLAST before, uh, and some of you will, of course, we're going to hear much more about it in a subsequent uh, video. We'll figure out how BLAST works and its underlying algorithms, and we'll apply it extensively. There's also listed here uh, databases for nucleotide, for genome, for SNP, that's single nucleotide polymorphism data or variant data, for genes, for proteins, and then this last one, PubChem, here this is for uh, small molecules or chemical entities, typically, uh, most, most typically uh, things that are drug-like, that interact with biomolecules uh, in, a, in important ways that we often want to, to know about for uh, biomedical research. So the most notable NCBI databases for the purposes of our course, the ones that will interact in these initial portions of the course, include GenBank and its derived database REFS. This is for nucleotide uh, sequences. We're going to interact a lot with those in the hands-on session and indeed uh, throughout the coming weeks. We'll also use the search tools Entrez. This is for uh, typically text-based searching across all of NCBI, across all their different databases and resources. And then we'll also, as I've already said, we'll, we'll use BLAST, this uh, sequence search tool. Now over to our second major uh, bioinformatics resource provider, that's the EBI here. You'll notice that its URL is based out of the United Kingdom. That's the .uk at the end here. The EBI, it stands for the European Bioinformatics Institute. It's actually based out of uh, just outside Cambridge in the, in the UK. It maintains a number of very high quality curated bioinformatics databases and a lot of associated tools. Also, I'll point out in the second red box there, they actually have a lot of training material, lots of video resources. That, let's, uh, well, you can see in the background of this slide, for example, that'll walk you through and introduce you to using a number of the major EBI resources and bioinformatics tools. They can be particularly useful. Now, for the purposes of our course, we're going to deal a lot with uh, Uniprot. This is a protein sequence database, one of the premier databases out there. It's actually a model for how we wish many bioinformatics databases were organized and arranged and maintained. We'll also interact a lot with Ensemble. This is for gen genome information. And we'll use the tools, uh, in particular Muscle. This is for multiple sequence alignment. And also Hammer, which is, uh, is a hidden Markov model-based approach for searching sequence databases, much in the same vein as BLAST but with a number of important uh, advantages and, and also a couple of limitations that we'll uh, touch on as well. It's meant to be more sensitive. In fact, it is more sensitive, but it can be dramatically more time consuming, as we'll see. Now, there are many, many uh, good, notable bioinformatics databases out there, of which I'm only listing a, you know, a small but still scary subset on this slide here. Now, quite frankly, it would be crazy, um, really rather boring actually, to start to go through any of these in any sort of detail at this stage of the course. But instead, what I want to point you to is a carefully annotated listing, a PDF file that I have on our class website, uh, that uh, annotates these major databases by particular application area. So the purpose here is, you know, if you end up in the future in a fly genetics lab, or you join an immunology group or a company, or you end up in a plant lab, or you work in a structural biology uh, group, you'll be able to, able to go to this handout and find the most widely best regarded, most highly cited uh, databases for each of those particular uh, biomedical research areas. So this will be a useful resource for you 
in the future rather than to try and dig into any of these other non-NCBI and EBI resources at this particular time. Now, as you go through maybe exploring that PDF, there's an important side note. note that is that not all databases are created equally. And just like these uh, cakes here, some of which I made with my uh, kids here during this uh, you know, corona lockdown, for example, right, you know, they contain the same ingredients as some of these cakes. They were meant to look like this. And this is the case for many of these databases. They were meant to, or they, indeed they do, contain the same biomolecular entities as some of the other databases, but they're not always going to be as good to interact with. Just like these cakes, they're not necessarily the ones you want to eat or select to eat. From, uh, from the ones that are available. So what we'll do is we'll explore uh, what makes databases uh, good for our particular application areas as we go through in our course. Uh, and we'll use many of these resources to help answer various uh, questions and see what makes a database good, and what makes it valuable, that it has the information, of course, that will help us answer our biological questions, but also that it's able to be searched in efficient, tractable and meaningful ways and link out to other good resources that we can learn uh, more from as we uh, go through. So this hands-on session that I mentioned, you'll find it on our class website. So at this stage, what I'd like you to do is to go back to our class website. So click on the schedule, go to week two, and you'll find a link there to lab. That's our hands-on uh, session. What we're going to do is we're going to explore uh, a number of these major databases, primarily from NCBI and EBI, but also some others as we investigate what's going on with a particular patient that's come into the clinic with some unknown condition. We'll get a sequence, as we'll see, and we're going to go through like a detective and try and explore uh, what could be wrong or what could be going on and actually get a molecular understanding of the basis of this patient's uh, condition. So the hands-on sheet, when you click on it, it'll look like this. For this week, it's a PDF. It has uh, fields in it and questions in it that you can fill in and save the PDF. A file with your answers. Um, uh, the, the major areas, there's a number of different sections, four major sections that I want every uh, student to go through. The first one goes through these NCBI resources. It should take you, it'll probably take you 20 minutes, but uh, you know I'm allocating around 35 here. Then the gene database at NCBI. Then I suggest we take a break for some time and then come back and we'll jump over to Europe to the EBI and we'll visit Uniprot, the premier protein sequence database. We'll use Muscle, an online tool out of the EBI web servers there, as well as some of these boutique databases, PFAM, which is also maintained out of the EBI, but the PDB for uh, protein structure data. And this final, this NGL, this is for viewing biomolecular structures in an online browser. Now, there are a number of questions throughout those sections. I do want you to please, everybody, please answer the last question in that workbook. That's that's a kind of what we call a muddy point uh, assessment question that asks you, you know, what is particularly unclear from uh, what we've covered this this week, and it lets me know uh, what maybe we're not doing a good job of, of getting across. And we'll try and record another video and or, or talk in the forums or in, in our Zoom office hours and get those points across in a in a different uh, way. We do encourage discussion uh, online in the forums and exploration. So please, uh, please do. If you, you know if you find something interesting as you're going through the lab sheet, don't be scared uh, to click off and, and go follow it up. Uh, exploration and uh, focus on something that you actually are interested in are going to help you learn this material a lot, a lot more clearly than just following a recipe that I that I give you, for example. So uh, with that, I'll finish up this video with a summary of what we've uh, talked about this far, namely that uh, bioinformatics is computer aided biology, that bioinformatics deals with the collection, archiving, organization, and interpretation of a wide range of biological data. It's not tied to any particular method or any particular subfield of biology, but it's as wide as biology itself. We've introduced the NCBI and the EBI. These are two major online bioinformatics service providers. And in the next video, we're going to actually walk through the gene, Uniprot, PDB databases, as well as a number of, uh, of other resources, including PFAM, Protein Family Database, and the OMEN database. This is for human disease uh, conditions, and they're linked to the genetic basis of those diseases. So we'll see you next time. Thank you.